Finally, the day we've all been waiting for has arrived. According to newer reports, the new iPads are expected to be on sale as early as October, if not sooner. Let's dive into this swiftly. Therefore, Wurz said Sooner Digital was the one to initially speculate about the potential of new iPads arriving shortly. Take this with a grain of salt, of course, but they look rather cool in the leak scene. But interpreting what they stated on WBO, an iPad Mini 7 with the A16 chipset, a new iPad 11 with the SBC Pencil, and an iPad S6 with M2 should be available by the end of this month. Now, in order to maintain his credibility, he did admit that he was unsure whether all three iPads would dip in at the same time, and that he was most optimistic about the Mini 7's impending release, but less so about the other two. By the way, we'd like to remind you guys to subscribe for more of this kind of stuff and to like this video. Let's review the changes since I've already gone into great detail about each of these iPads in separate videos. So far, we've heard of three distinct changes that started with the iPad Mini. A 16 improvements to the front-facing camera and resolution to the scrolling jelly problem. Guys, the difference between the current Mini's A15 and A16 is really small. Thus, I hope the Mini will offer a new entry level, A7 chipset with less CPU and GPU cores. The USB 3 rates and more critically, ray tracing would still be available though. However, we won't be receiving that. Instead, we'll be getting the uninteresting A16. Yeah, I suppose. The second adjustment is marginally more interesting because Wurz said Sooner Digital mentions that the Mini 7 screen assembly will be repositioned to lessen the impact of jelly scrolling. Now guys, I'll be honest, I missed this when I reviewed the Mini Sticks. I get that it's a valid criticism and that there was a significant uproar when it was first introduced, but I honestly can't get excited about this because I couldn't detect much of a difference between it and any other Apple LCD on the market. But I suppose that because of this, I'm delighted for those who were turned off by it in the past. The front-facing camera is the last change we've heard about, and while it's plausible, that the Mini may follow the basic iPad and switching to a landscape camera, I have no idea what they're doing. That eventually seems improbable given that the Mini works with the Apple Pencil 2, which of course has a charging strip next to the iPad 10's landscape camera. I therefore don't know what the Mini 7's change will be. It might be something very little, like this device getting some of the software capabilities found in more recent iPhone models, such as cinematic modes. We can observe it because, in my opinion, iPad's front-facing cameras still cannot be used for portrait photography. For sharper images, we might also use the photonic engine. Who does to care? There isn't much they can do here in my perspective since I primarily use the front-facing camera for calls and the Mini 6 already has center stage. Additionally, you'll presumably receive updated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth specifications, but generally this Mini 7 will feature a standard spec update. Thankfully, a price should remain the same and might be available in some chic new hues. However, as I've been saying for a while, the primary reason I'm excited about this update is because it should make the Mini 6 less expensive, which is fantastic news for frugal people like me. If the Mini 6 is now priced below $350, it would be a fantastic offer. Regarding the iPad's base model, we haven't actually heard a lot about it, but it wouldn't take a genius to figure out what kind of enhancements we would expect. This will be a spec refresh, just like the Mini. And if you stop to think about it, every prior base iPad has only seen spec improvements aside from the iPad 10, which introduced us to a fresh design. The iPad 11 will therefore be just that. Expect the A15 a slight improvement over the A14 in the iPad 10. However, the primary reason Apple is providing us with this is that they are no longer making additional A14 products. Since the iPhone 12 has been discontinued, it makes much more logistical sense to use the same A15 chipset that the iPhone 13, 14, Apple TV, and Southeast have instead of continuing to develop the A14 just for this one iPad. What has me more thrilled, however, is a USB-C Apple Pencil, which has already been hinted at. It makes sense to transfer the Apple Pencil 1 from Lightning to the Type-C connectors at this time, as there is code for it in iPad OS 17.1 and the EU is requiring Apple to migrate everything to USB Type-C. The beautiful thing about this is that, naturally, since the iPad 10 already has a Type-C port, the iPad 11 should have one as well. This means that you should be able to immediately plug the pencil into the iPads, which is far better than this abhorrent charging technique. Kill this silly dongle, please. The iPad S6 is the last item on the list and we haven't heard much about it either other than the M2 update. 
considering that M1 wasn't really being fully exploited on iPad and OS in the first place, and that adding M2 to this is somewhat stupid. This is definitely the iPad I'm least thrilled about, similar to the iPad mini. The only reason I want this to come out is to drive down the price of the M1 iPad Air, which if you can find one for under $450, will become a steal on the used and refurbished market. And if you're curious about the iPad S6's price, it should remain at $600 given that there haven't been many modifications. I am aware that a larger size option has been discussed, but I do not foresee its release at this time. That's it guys, and there's really one more indication that new iPads may be released soon, as we have learned from sources that iOS and iPad OS 17.1 may be released on October 24, which is precisely one week after the date of the 17th. So what I'm expecting to happen is that the iPads will be unveiled on October 17, will be available for purchase right away, but won't actually ship until October 24, when iPad and OS 17.1 will already be pre-installed. We learned about the SBC Pencil and the iPad OS 17.1 code most likely because Apple has been working behind the scenes to ship new iPads with this updated operating system, and this notion has been corroborated by a leaker as well. Please share your opinions in the comments section. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this.